Hi guys and welcome back to the second chapter in this series. If you missed the first part, make sure to pause this video and come back once you've caught up. In part one, we covered the overview of the series and how I go about setting up Logic to work with virtual instruments. As I mentioned in the last video, I've changed my sample rate to 48 kilohertz. Please make sure that you've done so as well. Okay, so in this chapter, guys, we're gonna cover making patches which are mapped to our MIDI controllers. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna right click on the, on the control we want to map a fader to. And you'll see here, look, I've already got it mapped to MIDI automation CC number one. And what CC means is just continuous control. So any control which has a continuous variation in value. So we're gonna remove that now and you'll see now as I move my modulation control, nothing's happening. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna say learn MIDI CC number automation. And then what happens here is you might think, oh, well, nothing's happening. What you've got to do is now move any control on your keyboard and it will map to that. Here we go. I'm just going to move this and now it's mapped. So perfectly, I have now on one fader the control I wanted to have mapped. So so that's perfect. So what I really like about this library is it lets me go ahead and actually control the articulations with MIDI continuous control, which is great. So you can do it again, right click on the actual uh, number here and it's currently on 11. I'm gonna go ahead and actually just click this little MIDI symbol and that is doing exactly the same thing as right clicking and saying learn MIDI CC. So I'm actually gonna use my modulation controller here and I can just quickly cycle through exactly which ones I want so I can be on staccato. then I can go very quickly just move the dial back to my legato. Then I'm going to show you one last trick guys that I love to do. Uh, essentially it lets me set up presets for the volume controls which is a really nice way of working. So if we look here, I've got CC87 is the fifth fader in my second bank. So we're just gonna click and drag that onto the stereo. And we're actually gonna set this from 0% to 0%. And what that does is anytime I move this fader, even if stereo is all the way up, anytime I move it, it just goes back down to zero. So essentially it mutes the uh, stereo track. And now what we can do is we can put this fader on all of the other faders. So now you'll see if I move this, they all move together. And even if stereo one's up, Sorry, this one, they will mute the stereo and all go up together. Obviously this is gonna to be too loud, but what we can do now is we can change the range that each of the mics is affected. So what I like to do is I like to go and essentially do an extreme close mix and then kind of go through the less aggressive sounding uh, mixes uh, all the way to an extreme far mix when I have um, five faders. So you can kind of understand what that will sound like. So what I like to do is on the close volume, I like to set that to uh, 0 to 85 percent. Then on the mid volume, I normally go to uh, 40 percent. And on the far volume, I go to 25 percent. So you'll see what that looks like now. If I have this up and I bring those down, it goes straight to this preset of uh, a close sounding mic with a bit of room sound. really nice is because these are recorded in situ that meaning uh, they're recorded with the cellos sitting in the room where they would be in the orchestra without moving the mics you have a kind of right hand pan naturally in the in the, in the mix uh, of the stereo mix from the patch which is great so now we're going to do that for the other mic presets uh, and now we're gonna save this patch because that's the important thing. We want to be able to recall this into templates that we use. So we're gonna go to file up here, or files, sorry. Go to save as, and essentially this is just saying you've only got one instrument in your stack, so you have to save uh, this as an instance of the cellos patch. So if you had um, two uh, instruments in here, for example, if I just go back to my libraries and I bring in, let's bring in a brass solo um, patch, you'll see here, if we go to files, save as, we've now got two listed, but we only want to save the cellos. So let's go here, and I like to call it cellos mapped. Uh, obviously you can have a different naming convention. The most important thing here, guys, is to not click this button here. What this will do is it will copy over all of the samples for that patch 
again. Um, you don't need to do that. It's just going to eat up hardware space and take a lot of time. So make sure you have cl uh, clicked patch only and absolute sample paths, and then you can click save, and then it's done. So now I'm just going to delete these both, reopen my string ensemble library, and you see here I've got another patch here called cellos mapped. Um, if I brought open the cellos, obviously, I'm not going to have any control. I'm moving a fader here. You can see it's gone back to key switching automation. Let's delete that. Uh, always to have a default is good, but I'm going to bring in my cellos mapped, and we've got all the control that we saved there, and this will save even when you... Um, when you leave contact, which is great. So it's just a, it's just a file on your computer. You can back these up. Um, but essentially guys, that's it. That's uh, all you need to know. You do have to do this on a patch by patch basis. Uh, it can get quite tedious, but actually I quite enjoy going through and making sure I've done all the control and it's quite satisfying to go in and actually say, okay, I want presets. Let's, let's think about how I'm going to set up my presets for the mic positions. And it can save you a lot of time uh, when you're worrying, okay, how can't, uh, you know, how come I'm not getting that sound that I really wanted? You can go in and, and quickly change your mic position and suddenly you've got a whole different sounding library. Um, so it, th that's essentially it, guys. Please go through all of your patches. I mean, it takes a little bit of time, especially with, with brass patches where there's six uh, different patches per library, but um, it, it is well worth it. Um, and you will see a lot of uh, time saved when it comes to uh, working with with your templates. Speaking of templates, we're going to cover that in the next chapter. You will need to go and save all your patches before we start making the templates because it is a fairly long process uh, in making the templates, which does require that you have patches already made um, that we save uh, to a template in Logic. But we're gonna cover that in the next chapter. I hope you've enjoyed this and it's been useful to you. And please do let me know if you have any questions or comments. I know we covered a lot of information in this chapter.